morning, everybody. Welcome to today's breakfast. My name is Casey Star Long, and look, I am so glad that God has led you here for breakfast. Now, if this is your first time ever watching one of my videos, I want to welcome you. So like I said, my name is Casey, and my husband and I, we are called to be pastors in the St. Louis area. And what I try to do each and every day is I share a word from the Lord and I call it today's breakfast because breakfast is supposed to be the most important meal of the day. And so what I literally do each and every day is I ask God, I say, God, what is the message that you would like to be released to your people? And so that's what I do each and every day. So I'm so grateful that God has led you here. And so let's have breakfast today. I'm really excited about the word that God has given me, and I believe it's going to be a blessing to you. I also want to make sure that you understand that if you ever miss any of my live broadcast, you can always go to my YouTube page where I post the messages for the breakfast. So you can watch them on demand at your convenience at any time. All I ask is that you subscribe to our page so you will get all of the updates. And I want to say hello because we have some folks who just watch the videos on YouTube. And so God bless you, each and every one of you. I see your comments and they really encourage me. So thank you so much for subscribing to this page. All right, you guys, the message that God gave me, I believe it's a great message, especially for creatives. Those of you that you know, God has called you to create things, whether you're an author, whether you're an entrepreneur, maybe you're a leader um, in the community or a leader in the church. This is a message that I believe it's prophetic and I believe that it's going to be a blessing. And so I'm calling today's message to flow in the anointing, to flow in the anointing. And good morning to you, Sister Soy Sauce. Thank you so much for tuning in for breakfast. You've been in my heart in prayer. And so I want to let you know that I'm definitely praying for you and those that are close to you. So God bless you. So you guys, we hear a lot of about flowing in the anointing. We hear a lot about that. Um, but, you know, um, I just heard this in my spirit. And so I began to just ask God, what are you talking about? And uh, God gave me an illustration on my own life that I'm going to share. So y'all know I like to share uh, just transparent stories about my life. And um, I am a seamstress. And so what I do is I like to sew. And really with sewing, it kind of, it's kind of like in cycles with me that there are like some seasons where I'm really sewing a lot. Um, in this season, I'm just really sewing for myself and I'm sewing some uh, items, not necessarily clothes for other people. But um, so sometimes sewing is kind of, it's kind of like a way, you know, some, some days I'm really sewing a lot. And then some seasons I'm not sewing as much, but um, I had somebody contact me about sewing, sewing some lap scarves for them. And so they needed six lap scarves. So I started sewing them. And after I got done with the six lap scarves, which took me a little bit of time, um, I felt like I could have sewn some more stuff. But guess what? I was done. I was done with the six lap scarves. And so what I did was it was late in the evening. I just got in bed and, you know, just spent some time with my husband. We were like looking at TV. I think I was like surfing the web. But God began to remind me of the story of the widow with the oil. And y'all know the story of how she was broke and her sons were about to be sold into slavery. And Elisha, you know, gives her this advice about just uh, getting some pots and pouring the little bit of oil that she had. And as she began to pour it into the pots, more and more oil uh, began to, to come. And God began to remind me that he was like, Casey, you know what? I really want you to flow in the anointing that I've given you a grace to sow in this season. And so, um, you know, like even though you finished with those six lap scarves, that there was still an anointing for you to sow some more. And God began to remind me just about some creative ideas that he has given me of some other things that I could sow so I can sell and so it can bless my business. Now, I use this example of sewing 
uh, for my life, but I want to encourage you, whatever God has called you to do, I want to let you know there's a grace, there's an anointing for you to do it. And our flesh or just kind of habit will be that we'll just stop once we finish with what we think is our assignment. But what I'm hearing from the Lord today is to encourage you to go further that there's a grace, that God is saying, go further, be diligent, walk, flow, run with the oil, run with the anointing. And so that's where this title comes from, that God is saying, look, flow with my anointing. You see, when I finished those seven lap scarves, uh, six lap scarves, I felt like I was like, you know what? I could really sew some more. You know, maybe I could like finish up some or work on some dresses or something. But I was like, mm -hmm. You know, well, I just thought about just doing the six scarf. So I, I finished that. So I'll just get in the bed and, and just surf on the web. But God began to be like, look, you, you're not sensitive. You're not understanding that that grace, that feeling that you could have sowed some more, that that was me. And um, by you sowing and by you working in that gift, that's going to bring increase into your life. And so maybe you're writing a book. And maybe you're like, you know what? I'm just going to write one chapter a day. But what I hear from the Lord, the Lord is saying that I'm giving you a grace to go beyond. I'm giving you a grace to go beyond your normal stopping points. And this is a grace. It's going to bless you. Maybe you're working on a, a business plan and maybe you just said, you know what? I'm going to just spend X amount of time each and every day on it. I want you to just really be sensitive and ask God to just help you discern help you discern the timing that God is saying, look, this is a time where I want you to flow with my anointing. Maybe what you do is you just normally spend about 30 minutes in prayer or whatever it is, an hour. God is saying, look, flow, step in the anointing that there is more that I want to bless you with, that there's a grace that there's a grace, that there's more that God wants to put over your life. There's more increase that he wants to bless you with and how important it is to hear and to heed this word in this season and in this hour to not just stop, but to flow in the anointing of God. So you guys, what we're going to do is I want to just pull out, I want to pull out some nuggets from the story of the widow with the oil, okay? And so we're coming from 2 Kings chapter 4, verses 1 through 7. And this is a familiar text, but it is so rich. And when God began to just speak to me how I just stopped at the six lap scars, he reminded me of the woman with the oil because after she ran out of pots, then the oil stopped. But what would have happened if she would have had more pots? the oil would have continued to flow. So that's what God is saying. You know, don't just stop at your normal stopping point because you think that you're finished, but ask God for discernment, ask God for the grace, the sensitivity where you're not just stopping when God really has given you a grace to go further. And the reason why he's giving you that grace to go further because there's something else that he wants to download in your heart. There's something else that he wants to do in you on the inside. There's greater expansion in the business Business that he desires to give you. So that's why today we're talking about being able to just flow in the anointing of God. All right, you guys. So let's look at some of the lessons we can learn from this widow. All right. The first thing is, is that we need to understand is that we need to have a problem. So whether you're an entrepreneur, a creative, or maybe, you know, God has given you an assignment, but there needs to be an issue. So the widow, she had a problem, right? She found out that her husband died. She was a widow and her husband owed some creditors. And those creditors were coming after the widow and they were saying, look, we're going to, you need to sell your sons into slavery to pay off this debt. So the widow had a problem. And so whatever your problem may be, maybe it's, there are not enough finances. Maybe you're just kind of stretched out with writer's block, whatever it is, there needs to be a problem. So the widow had a problem. All right. So we need a problem. And so the second thing is, is that one of the lessons that we can learn from the wi widow is that she sought wisdom, okay? She sought wisdom from someone with some sense. So the scriptures let us know in 2 Kings chapter four that she goes to Elisha and she's like, look, your servant is dead. And we can imagine that her husband was uh, a student of Elisha. He was uh, probably a student in his school of prophets. And um, he may have served Elisha very faithfully because when this widow comes to speak to Elisha, uh, she has his attention. 
All right. And so she goes to Elisha because she understands that this is a man of wisdom. And so, um, you know, whatever it is that we want to go to God, we want to go to to those um, in positions of authority that can be able to help us and give us wisdom. So we're talking about lessons that we can learn from this widow so we can flow in the anointing. So we see in this passage of scripture that Elisha was willing to help the widow. He listened to her problem. So she tells him, she's like, look, my husband is dead. We owe money. And actually they want to take my sons into slavery. So she found herself in a dire situation where not only has she lost her husband, but she was about to lose her sons as well. So Elisha listens to her problem. And that's why it's really important that we need to have people in our lives that will listen. And I'm so grateful that God is a good God, that he listens to us. He already knows our problems, but he listens. And so Elisha asked her a very pointed question. You know, he's listening to her talk about she owes this debt. Her husband's dead. They want to sell her children into slavery. But he asked her a very pointed question. And he says, well, what do you have in your house? And I really feel like God is like, look, what do you have in your house? Yes, I know you may have this problem. I know you may have this need. I know you may feel that, you know, you're facing a, a blank wall or you're facing an obstacle or a hindrance. But Elisha asked her, he says, well, what do you have in your house? And I think that's such a it's such a great prophetic question. And, you know, what what do you have in your house? What is it that you can do? And so the widow, she replies and she's like, I just have a little bit of oil. I just have a little bit of oil. And so whatever it is that you may feel like you have just a little bit, you're going to see that that's all it takes, that you may just have a little bit. I remember when um, I first started sewing. Now, I come from a line of different seamstresses. I come from a line where my grandmother was a seamstress and so was my great grandmother. But I did not learn how to sew until I was in my late 20s, I believe. I was in my I was 28 years old. So I've been around women who could sew, but I never really sat down to learn how to sew until I was well late in my 20s. And so um, I often regarded my gift of sewing as, you know, I can do it. I like to do it. But, you know, it's just a little something that I could do. And I would sew these clothes and people would be like, they are, they are beautiful. But I always regarded it as just a, a little bitty gift. It's just a little something that I could do. And when God began to pull me out of a full-time job and when, uh, when he pulled me really into ministry, I found myself being like, okay, well, what am I going to do um, in between these speaking engagements? Because I need to bring in some income. And God began to say, look, what can you do with your hands? And he began to remind me of my gift of sewing. And I was like, you know what, God, this is a little gift. People aren't going to pay for this. This is something I just like to do for myself. It's a hobby. But like this widow, God was like, look, what's in your hands? What's in your house? What can you do? And I believe that God is asking you this question. What can you do? Can you bake? Can you cook? Do you know how to sew? Can you write? Can you build things? Can you babysit? Can you organize things? What is it in your house that you can do? So the widow, so the, so Elisha asked the widow, the widow says, look, I got a little bit of oil. All right. And so Elisha begins to give her directions on what to do with a little bit of oil. And I think it's so important is that not only does she ask for advice, but she also listens to the advice. And here's one of the things that I love about this scripture is that Elisha tells her, he says, look, you know what? Go and borrow pots from your neighbors. And he says, don't borrow just a little bit, but borrow a lot of pots from your neighbors. And then he gives her further instructions. He says, look, go in your house and shut the door. Sometimes you guys, when we go to God for advice and he gives us advice, we got to shut the door. We got to shut the door to the past. We got to shut the door to even our own thoughts. We got to shut the door to people. So he tells her, he says, look, you and your sons, you take these pots, you go in your house and you close the door. You close the door. Some stuff God may be giving you in this season because we're talking about flowing with the oil. I'm talking to people that you know God has given you an assignment. You know that there's a call of God over your life. You're going to have to be like that widow where you go in the house and you shut the door. 
And then he begins to tell her, he says, look, you pour that oil and you keep pouring that oil into those pots. And so that's what she does. Her and her sons, they go in the house, shut the door, and they begin to pour into the many pots that they have borrowed. All right. And so we know that when we read the story, she pours into the pots. She asks her sons, OK, well, give me another pot. And they tell her, look, there are no more pots. We, we've used all of the pots. And then the Bible tells us that the oil stopped flowing. So I love this. I love this example because you guys were talking about flowing with the anointing of God. And so one of the bonus lessons, observations that I have pulled from this text is I've always wondered that had she borrowed even more pots, you know, the oil would have continued to flow and she would have had even more. So she tells Elisha, she's like, look, we, we poured out the oil and he gives her the instructions and he says, look, pay off your debts with the oil and live off of the rest. And one of the things I think about this text is, is that it's so important to make sure that, look, I got enough pots, <laughs> that I have enough pots. I want to be to the point where I'm tapping out, where I'm using everything that God has called me to do. I want to, look, I want to get as much as possible for what God has for me. And so for those of you that are just not joining, we're talking about being able to discern and asking God for the knowledge and the wisdom to be able to flow in his anointing. That there are some things that you were doing. There are some things that God has called you to do. But God is saying that this is a grace, that this is a season where he's given you the, the grace to go a little bit further, where he's given you the grace to pour and to pour and to pour and you won't run out. But it's so important for us to be able to understand and discern this time and season that we just don't stop, that we won't be like how I was that. You know, after I finished my six lap scarves for the customer, I just stopped. Okay, well, I'm done. But God is like, no, go further. Look, work on this creation. Work on this idea that I planted in your heart. Start sowing some other stuff. There's a grace here. There's an anointing here. So God's saying there's a grace to study my word. There's an anointing to write prophetic songs. There's an anointing to build apostolically. There's an anointing to work on this nonprofit. There's an anointing to create this business. There's an anointing to write the next book. Don't just stop at these artificial boundaries that you have placed, but God is saying, look, I've given you a grace to go further. That like the widow with the oil, that as she poured the oil, she paid off her debts. So she settled the need because remember she had a problem. She had an issue, right? Where creditors were coming to her. So God is saying, look, keep pouring the oil until I tell you to stop. Keep working in that vein until I tell you to stop. I have really felt in this season just a push from God um, that there is an assignment that he has given me um, that I have been working diligently on that's connected to sewing, um, but there's a ministry component to it. But I just really felt this push from the Lord where God is saying, look, don't stop. Keep going. There's oil here. There's oil here. So flow with the anointing. We talk so much about being able to flow with the anointing. But one of my call of action. So we're going to do a call of action because, look, if you're connected with me in this ministry, we're not just hearing what the word of God says, but we're going to apply it to our lives. So our call of action for today is we want to pray for a spirit of diligence. That when we look at the widow with the oil, she was diligent, you guys. She diligently sought after wisdom and she followed the instructions of Elisha. So we want to pray that we will be diligent. Proverbs uh, chapter 12, verse 24, it lets us know that the hand of the diligent will rule. So one of the things that I have to be careful with is I'm like, okay, look, I finished, I finished those lap scarves for this customer. I'm done. I can chill. Look, let me get into bed and watch TV and, you know, watch Netflix and hang out with my husband. There's a time for that. Don't get me wrong. There's a time to rest and to relax. But God is also letting us know that the hands of the diligent will rule. And guess what, guys? I want to jump in this flow. When God says that there's an anointing for business over my life, when God says there's an anoint, anointing for creativity over your life. When God says, look, there's a mantle over your life to write books. There's an, a mantle over your life to create and build things apostolic, 
apostolically, when God says there's an anointing for you to create uh, prophetic songs and, and to worship him and to study his word, we want to flow with that anointing. We want to be where God is. We want to be diligent. So I bind off just the works of the flesh of laziness and procrastination. I bind that off. And so, Father, we pray right now in the name of Jesus for a spirit of diligence and discernment so that, God, we can hear you. God, what are you saying? Father, I pray that you will open up the ears over each and every person, God, that is watching this broadcast, that you will speak to them, Father, that they will be like the sons of Issachar, God, and they will be able to discern the times, God, that, Lord, there's a grace, there's an anointing, there's a river, God, that you're calling for them to jump in, God, and, Lord, there's going to be grace for them to, to do, God, what you have called them to do in this season. And so, Father, I pray, God, that the pots, that the, the Lord, there will be many pots, God, and that they will just be able to pour out their gifts. They'll be able to work, God. They'll be able to do what you called them to do, and it will be a blessing for them, God, and a blessing for the advancement of your kingdom. Father, I decree a finisher's anointing, God, over each and every person, Lord, connected to this ministry. God, I decree blessings over them that you will bless and you will prosper and establish the work of their hands in the name of Jesus. So guys, that's our call to action, that I want you in your personal time with God, just ask God to give you the grace to be diligent. Just meditate on that. God, give me discernment. God, open up my eyes so I can see what you're saying and what are you doing in this season. God, Lord, give me the grace. God, help me not to miss where you are. I don't want to be idle, God. If you're saying, look, jump in this river where you are, God, this is where I want to be. So that's our call to action for today. I also want to encourage you that there may be some folks that are watching this video and maybe the Lord just popped this up on your timeline. You're not really sure why you clicked. And um, I want to invite you, if you haven't already, at, to ask Jesus into your heart. Um, Jesus has completely transformed my life. You know, that's why I'm here speaking and sharing the word of God because of a relationship with Jesus Christ. That there was a time in my life where I didn't know him, um, but it's because of this relationship with him that has made me so excited and just so filled with fire that I want to just tell everybody about Jesus and about what God is saying and how much God loves people. And so that's why I'm here today. But I want to invite you, if you've never, ever accepted Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, I want to give you an opportunity to do that. All right. I want to let you know that God loves you and he sent Jesus to die on the cross for your sins. And the word of God is very easy. It says, look, if you will just um, believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins and if you accept them into your heart, you will be saved. And what we mean by being saved is that you'll have eternal life with Jesus Christ. So I'm just going to ask for you to just repeat this prayer after me. And it says, dear God, I love you. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross for my sins. And Lord, I accept him into my heart to be my savior. Now cleanse me, guide me, and fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you prayed that prayer for the first time, you've accepted Jesus Christ into your heart. Now what's really important is for you to get connected to a good church. I love for you to continue to watch my videos, but I really want you to get connected to a good church um, that will teach you and, and help disciple you in the things of the Lord. You guys who normally watch my videos each and every day, I think it's really important that uh, we remember um, that we want to be bright lights for the unsaved. And uh, we always want to use our platforms to lead people to Christ. So I'm going to make sure that we try to do that each and every broadcast because you never know who's watching. You never know who's watching and who God will lead to uh, view our broadcast or to hear our testimonies. All right, you guys. Well, that is our breakfast for today. I pray that you have been blessed. There are just a couple of announcements that I want to make sure that you know about. So beginning November the 19th, I am hosting a four-week online Bible study. So wherever you are, you can participate in this Bible study. All you have to do is go to my website, www.inspiredoverflow.com, which is the name of this ministry, and you can register for this four-week online Bible study. We're going to be pulling up the roots of rejection, insecurity, 
You know, sometimes you just need to know what God's word says about you. So I want to invite you to this four week online Bible study. I'm telling you, it's going to be filled with sisterhood. It's going to be a great way to connect. Um, And the Bible study will actually take place over a private Facebook group. So when you register, I'll send you all the information so you can connect with this Bible study. I also want to announce you guys that my new book, Self-Esteem Through Scripture, it is out. It is now available on Amazon.com. And um, guess what? For every person that registers for the Bible study, you will receive a free autographed copy of my book, Self-Esteem Through Scripture. So maybe you might be saying, look, I don't want to go through the Bible study. That's fine. Just go to Amazon.com and you can purchase the book and you can read it on your own. All right. But I would love to have you come to the Bible study. I think it'll be a blessing. Um, Let's see. What else? So this Saturday, Apostle Robert Flowers, he's hosting his workshop on mantles understanding what mantles are. Um, And he has just really a great gift of teaching and equipping the body of Christ. So this is a free workshop beginning at 9 a.m. in St. Louis, um, all the way up to 1 p.m. And it will take place at the Rock Road Branch Library. So um, please mark your calendars and please attend. And we thank Apostle Robert Flowers for supporting Inspired Overflow Ministries. Also, there is an upcoming prayer breakfast. And I love this. It's sponsored by the Apostolic Women of St. Louis. And it's called Fearless and Free. It's taking place on Saturday, November the 10th from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. Tickets are $25. And this is a great opportunity for moms and daughters to come to this prayer breakfast together. So there's going to be a lineup of great speakers. I want to thank Brenda Young for uh, sharing this information with our ministry so I can share it with you. They're also asking for you to bring a package of socks, warm socks that they will give to different ministries um, in the St. Louis area. So definitely mark your calendars for Fearless and Free on November the 10th. All right, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me today for today's breakfast. Today is Wednesday. That means that it's the Inspired Overflow Radio Show Day. So I will be back today at three o'clock. We will have Rhonda Hopton. She is the playwright. She's written a play called The Girl Who Never Cried. She's going to be sharing about that upcoming play taking place in St. Louis. Uh, Various members of the cast will also be with us on the radio today. And then we will have Mr. Sal Martinez. He's with the North Newstead Association. They were actually in the St. Louis Post-Dispatch this week talking about the work that they are doing in the community. There's going to be an important crime prevention meeting taking place in St. Louis this weekend. And so he's going to come on the radio show to share about that. So you guys, I will be back here live at three o'clock and you'll be able to watch the Inspired Overflow radio show as well. All right, you guys be blessed. Have a great day. Don't forget our call to action. We're praying for diligence and praying really for discernment so that we can just flow in, in the anointing of God. All right, you guys be blessed. Have a great one.